traders, it's Graham here from Tilted Trading. Um, busy week uh, trading this week, um, a few ups and a few downs. So uh, we'll revise uh, some of our trades, have a, I guess, a review uh, rather than a revision uh, as such on our trade that's still open. That's the, the Euro JPY. Uh, and address some of the, the comments and um, that have uh, appeared in our YouTube channel, which is uh, which is good. Um, always um, keen to read the, the view um, of uh, those folks looking at the video. So first thing was um, there was a comment from Shane in terms of uh, use of um, the TradingView platform. Yes, it's not cheap. Um, MT4 platform that currency traders uh, use uh, is also very good. I use it myself to, to place trades. Um, and more interestingly, there are CFDs now available on the MT4, MT5 platform where you can trade stocks. So yes, you do have wrinkle charts there. And um, to be honest, Shane, I haven't found them all that useful. Uh, I know there's a whole variety of um, scripts there that you can get, but I found the, the one in Trading View is uh, exceptionally good. It keeps it clean, simple. Um, you have it across the different um, uh, ranges, as, as you say, the daily, um, the intraday charts, uh, which is fantastic. Um, I just find the platform really, really good. Um, especially if you're trading stocks, I traditionally use Renko on stocks. So if you're going to be in stocks, then you've got to, uh, I guess, have a fairly large um, uh, sum of money to, to invest in the market unless you're trading CFDs, which I have done uh, previously. I probably need to do a bit more of. Um, but certainly uh, when it's um, stocks, then it's actually tax deductible. So that's a little um, a good one th uh, thing to note there against Forex trading. Um, which isn't tax deductible within your training courses, but stocks are. So um, if you're trading stocks or you're predominantly a, a currency trader, but you, you trade the odd stock, then it's uh, a good thing to actually buy the the access to the platform on TradingView. I have no affiliation with TradingView. I just think it's a fantastic um, platform, but it all comes back to the three things that I, or the three ingredients that I hold to in terms of successful trading, which I'm a firm believer in, which is number one, belief. You need to, to trust your system uh, and belief, have belief in yourself that you you, you can do it and um, you're following the, the correct methodology in terms of sticking to your plan. The second thing um, uh, I believe in, I've always been a firm believer in, in, in terms of uh, tools. Um, I tend to not, um, uh, save money on tools if I'm doing stuff around the house you know I'll you know I, I do a lot of stuff around the house so I'll buy the best tools so I'll buy Bosch I'll buy Makita um, you know I'll buy really good quality tools because I know I'm going to be using them again and it just makes everything a lot simpler the same applies in trading um, and thirdly discipline so you might have you know belief you might have the tools you might have a good trading system but if you don't have the discipline to follow the rules in that system then it all falls apart so and um, that addresses um, those comments but that was all good comments from Shane and the other comment was um, I think from Eslin who would like to get that go and um, my thoughts on that is um, yeah by all means give it a go um, my advice would be though to start on if you're new to trading uh, certainly or even if you're experienced them um, Always when you're trading a new strategy, uh, never trust the person who's selling you the strategy. Do some testing, back testing yourself with the strategy. Uh, I've tried to pick out some you know, random trades um, for you guys in some of the examples. Um, you, you know, you'll see that there's, there's some losers in there as well. That's uh, just part of trading. But my advice would be, do yourself a favor, get a demo account, follow some trades that we're doing and um, that I'm announcing um, on, on the YouTube uh, channel. Uh, follow along, see how you go, see if you can stick to the rules. I would give yourself 20 trades. I think that's a nice number. I've sort of mentioned that number before in terms of your success rate. Um, you know, manage the risk and um, have, have a, you know, the same discipline as you would on your with your own money. 
um, and then you know then make the move to a live account um, and, and only then especially if you're new to to trading um, I, I certainly did that for a while but uh, I guess my thinking was a little bit different from your average trader um, but certainly if you've never traded before get a demo account do yourself a favor get a demo account do at least 20 trades and then put in some money now with that i sort of uh, i guess my journey uh, i did uh, open a demo account did some trades and then jumped in and um, what i will say is the psychology is very very different when you're trading a demo account to uh, your own money so um, in my case what i did was i kept the amount small um, and i kept the amount small until i was confident enough to to increase um, my uh, I guess my uh, uh, budget if you, if you like um, everything was the same though your lot sizes increase your risk stays the same but you're putting a risk um, obviously some more money so um, unless you can get successful guys and this is a, this is a key message I need to get across if you guys cannot be successful on a small account because remember it's all about percentages do not put more money into the market if you cannot trade a small account, you will not be able to certainly trade a large account, especially with the psychology involved. You're trading larger amounts of money and you're putting more risk in the table. All the parameters stay the same. It's no different. But if you cannot trade successfully and get the percentages, uh, get the wins on the board in terms of being consistent, um, you need to stay on that smaller account until you see a consistent pattern appearing in your trading okay um so probably enough said there um enough of the lecture and um, what we'll do is we'll move on to some uh, trades i got a, a message from hamish in norwich who uh, trades uh, predominantly stocks uh, I don't think he's short stocks, so I think he, he's more a, an investor. And look, with stocks is a little bit different. Everyone's got their different game plan there. And um, you're either in for, you know, capital appreciation in terms of stocks going up, or you might be playing the dividend game. So you're looking for a steady income, not really necessarily too concerned about the ups and downs as long as you're getting your dividend return because you're more a, an investor looking at the long term, which is fine. Um, so I have committed to have a look at um, the stock submitted by Hamish and they wanted me to review because my indicators do work on stocks uh, predominantly formulated for uh, uh, the forex market but I do use my indicators on stocks as well I do trade stocks and um, I have one go-to indicator on stocks and um, which I guess is a myth as well guys like I know everyone is uh, searching for that holy grail it doesn't really exist um, you have to find a strategy that suits your style of trading and for me I only use one strategy in stocks that is it I don't I don't mess about with a number of strategies there I have one strategy in stocks the same can be said in forex a lot of people a lot of very successful traders will you trade one system and one trade system only and um, some are really simple some are a bit more complex but for stocks for me I like to keep it really simple I keep to the basics and um, I trade more price action. I have, a, a, I guess, an eye on the, the news, but not really too concerned about the news. I'm a price action trader. So let's get into it. Um, I have a nice uh, range of stocks. So I like the, the mix that Hamish has here um, uh, in terms of diversification. So I've done a little bit of prep, but I thought I'd um, go through my breakdown of what I'm seeing in terms of whether I would be interested in, say, taking a trade on some of these stocks. I have interestingly traded some of these stocks before, uh, being originally from the UK, so uh, a couple of them are quite familiar to me, but I haven't traded them in a while, so uh, let's have a look. So the first one is um, Centrica, uh, uh, ticker uh, CNA. So I've started with the monthly chart. So in trading, um, and it doesn't matter what you're looking at, what trading instrument you're looking at, whether it's stocks, you're looking at futures, you're looking at um, stock indexes, if you're looking at Forex, it's all about the bigger picture. And I can't stress that enough. So what I like to do is um, like to break things down. I go to the monthly chart. So here on um, Centrica, um, we're coming into a very strong level of 
um, resistance here. Bearing in mind, uh, I've only got data here on TradingView. It's a relatively new platform. I've got data going back to sort of uh, 1998, you would say. Um, so we're coming back into a strong period of resistance. I can't see what's happened before, but that doesn't really matter too much. Um, but in terms of this chart, we're, we're, we're sort of in uncharted territory. So we're reaching, reaching new lows. We've had a massive downturn here. You can see here that's supported by our kilted strength meter. And um, we've certainly got the red above the blue. We've got a tick to the upside in terms of um, a, a trend. And we can see that here supported on our chart here. So I'm using Renko, uh, a Renko chart here to, to trigger my um, buys and sells. It's as simple as that. Um, so would I trade this? Okay, in the longer term, it's not looking great. It's uh, heading into um, a, a, a downturn that's had a considerable amount of down, downward movement. Um, news is not great. Um, Central Coast British Cash, furlough 3,000 employees, 3,800 employees, that's a big number. Um, so yeah, not looking great for that stuff. But if we go to the daily, let's look at uh, what's happening down there. And we'll just reset our chart. Um, so these lines here, this is, um, this is just showing me some sort of uh, minor support and resistance lines here. So you can see we're broken, <laughs> I'm broken, we've smashed right through support here. Um, bearing in mind, we are going back um, a fair while here where we've taken this back to since, if we had a short on this, so if we're trading CFDs, we would have taken a short here, which was in February, 5th of February uh, last year, that was 2019, and we've had a consistent run down, and then we've had the inevitable pullback, and then we've had another sort of uh, push push down, and we've had a little bit of, um, of a retracement here, but um, that's probably not one that I would necessarily look to trade at the moment. Uh, it doesn't look very attractive to me uh, whatsoever, other than something to uh, the downside. But we've had this tick up here, um, so yeah, probably don't have much interest in that one. Um, but it's certainly seen um, a lot of downward movements. Let's see if we can see where we're at over here in support. Um, so some of the scary things you see in some of these stocks at the moment is there is no bottom. <laughs> We're at all time lows. So if I scroll across here, do we have any support to think of? No, we don't. So we're at, we're at a really sort of scary point in some of these stocks. Um, so it's a matter of where you're playing this. Are you playing the dividend or are you looking for some sort of push back up to, to, to save something. Um, look, if I was in, um, well, I probably wouldn't be in long here, but um, yeah, so I really don't see much upside to this stock at the moment. Uh, the dividend play, not sure what they're playing out in dividend, but that might be not a bad play. Um, but certainly nothing, um, nothing interesting for me there at the moment, uh, I would say. Uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, we'll have a look at that one next. So um, again, obviously the banks are doing it fairly tough across the board uh, in most countries at the moment. Um, so if we look across, um, let's jump to the monthly. Um, now I did draw a support line here. That was the only thing I think I've sort of um, prepared ahead of this one. Again, we're coming down into key support levels. Um, if we scroll across here, yeah, we're sort of down at, um, in uncharted territory again. So I like, um, do I like much here? No, see, so we're coming back into, we've had a big downturn and then we've chopped around here and then we're back. And um, we can see here, we've got our um, strength, our trend strength sort of dipping down before the white so we're sort of being chopping around here um so let's see uh, so we're eventually saying we're range bound here so we've got a sort of uh, resistance here we've got support sort of down here it's really a temporary support really there's not no other really support 
to, to mention even as back as 2003 we've got nothing to hold us up here so I certainly would be interested in a shot if we sort of started to continue the slide down here and especially if this ticked up um, but let's look at the daily and see you know, what's been happening there um, so yeah we're into key support uh, on the daily uh, chart uh, looking like we're going to break through um, support here we've, we've also got a fair amount of momentum behind us here to push us through this support level um, let's see some of the news okay RBS profit slash by virus provisions um, yeah not looking good um, Royal Bank of Scotland stock moved up by 3.7 okay Royal Bank of Scotland sets aside 1 billion for bad loans so no good news there to speak of and um, so again um, we we'll find support here so where are we here so we are back to we're back to sort of I guess the GFC levels here just post GFC so we're around about the sort of GFC levels um, so that's where we're finding support so the big question is are we going to head north from here are we going to get some push off this support which is a fairly strong level everyone's sort of on their charts looking at what happened around the gfc certainly a lot of traders around the world are doing that so it's very interesting that this particular stock has come back down to that level so i actually wouldn't be doing anything here i'd be looking to see and um, this could actually go north or it could go south so but it, until it shows a little bit more price action here i won't be interested and um, but certainly if it breaks down through here there's no support uh, to 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 prop it back to bounce back up off. So um, fancying probably a push to the downside here, and uh, based on where the the UK is at with their handling of the virus. Um, not to say it can't go back up, but I would certainly be favouring a, a shot here. Um, next one up is Lloyd's. Now this is another one I've traded in the past. Um, this one's looking a little bit more interesting. So um, what we've seen here, supported by our currency strength, um, our strength meter, kilted strength meter there, we're seeing the big push to the downside. We've got that flagged here by the tick to the upside and that would have got us in. You can see our kilted sale there. If we were trading CFDs, we would have went short and would have ridden this right down to the bottom, which would have been from 259, which I think is £2.59, down to, we would have got right down to 36 uh, pence on that one. So that was a, a massive run on that one, supported by our kilted strength meter. Um, where do we at now? Um, we are at support. We've got strong level of support um, coming in there. We seem to be bouncing around. Um, we've still got an uptick um, of trend um, to the downside though. So it would appear to me that we're heading back down to test this level of support down here. Um, who knows where it goes from there, but we're certainly looking to come back down there. If we look at the daily, um, let's look at where we are there. We'll just reset the chart. Um, so, yeah, I would say we have another kilted cell signal there. Um, I, I would say here, guys, we're probably heading back down to support. So I see moves uh, further to the downside down to a target of probably 25 pence. Um, and then I'd be taking that trade off the table. So I'd be targeting a short on that to 25 uh, pence um, as we approach the support level and um, so that's why I'd be playing um, that one there obviously it's still supported by our uh, strength meter there and um, the next one is um, the national grid so we're talking UK stocks here uh, guys and um, so we'll have a look at this one let's go to the monthly see what we've got there see what's been happening reset the chart so we don't have too much data on this one so that's not giving us uh, too much to play with 
in terms of price action. So you see how um, Renko, it's quite deceiving, I'm thinking I don't have too much price action. We do actually have data back to two, uh, 2007, but it's, uh, it's had a good ride up. It's had a bit of a pullback and then we're on the way up again. So This one's looking a little bit more interesting. So let's go down to the daily chart and have a look there. Uh, and this one is actually quite interesting. Um, so this one is looking pretty much range bound. So for this one, you would say the support is probably here as a target and we'd have support. Well, we've got a strong support there, which is um, backed up by this. Um, and if we go to our next support level, we're saying we've got here. Uh, what else would we have? We'd have one here. So we've, really what we're saying, guys, we've, we've come off support here and we're, we're pushing up again. And um, we can see we're chopping around a bit down here and that indicates the sideways market. So that's what you're seeing here. So you could play... Um, the sideways uh, game in terms of um, having a, a target up here, which would be um, that would be probably ten pounds fifty, um, and we're signalling an entry here. Would I take the trade? Probably wouldn't. Um, I don't have the the um, blue above the the red here. Um, red background, um, but you could play that. That's I'm not really too interested in sideways markets, but um, could you take a trade? Yes, you could up to this support. You probably have a tight stop here, um, but then um, yeah, certainly not one I'm interested in. Very much a, a sideways sort of movement um, here on the daily, um, but you you certainly could um, go long here for catching this action. We've been down and then we're straight back up to resistance straight back down to support are we heading back up to resistance again um possibly <laughs> um hard one to pick that one um but yeah that's been uh, that was an interesting look at that one the next one we have is aviva insurance company um this one looks um not good at all from what i can see um, momentum's out the market. We've got support down here, which is where we seem to be heading. Um, we've had a very large slide here. You can see phase one and um, phase two, which is a pullback. So we've had a big downward push. We've had a pullback, then a down push, then a slight pullback. Then we've been chopping around here. As you can see on the on the meter here, we've just been slopping around um, after a large move which is fairly typical in the market so we'll draw support resistance lines here and um, we might actually have a break of this support which is looking like we've got so it looks like this one is heading down to support and um, you could say this is actually a, a bear flag so you've got the the pole here we've got this sort of sideways action then you know a further move down how far this will go down um, not quite sure. Let's see if we get any support over here. Again, we're back to 2001 here. So we're at all time lows and we're looking like going lower. If we look at the daily chart, uh, where are we here? On the daily, yeah, we've sort of broken support. We've broken support, we've come up to retest. Look at that. And then we're heading down again. Classic and um, break of support, come up to retest it then down again. So I would say we are heading for a further down move, looking at the technicals on this. Um, again, um, first level of support we would say would be here, which is, we're going far back as, guess what, GFC time. So I would say um, probability is stacked in the favour for a short here, and uh, down to um, probably 178 would probably stop short of that target. 178 would probably a target um, there on that one if you're going short. Certainly nothing long on that one. Uh, next one up was uh, Morrison's, which is a, a, a good mix. I like, I certainly like the mix. 
Um, so where are we here? Um, so uh, Morrison's uh, also was quite interesting. Um, so we've come up here, we've pulled back. Um, let's just draw some lines here. You could say that is a level of support that we're coming back into. And we'll come to this in a second. Let's see if we got that on the daily. There's probably some support here. Now, again, we're chopping around a little bit on this one. As you can see, we're up, you know, with false break back down straight to support. We've come up, um, retraced and straight back down to support. Are we heading up? Are we going down? Okay, um, certainly here we're sort of pointing down, um, albeit with uh, some choppy price action. We can probably draw something in the roundabout there as well because we've had a retracement come back down then up to that uh, level of resistance so we've certainly been chopping around a little bit um, but let's see what we've got in the daily chart see if there's anything of interest um, okay so for those guys who are new to trading something just screams at me in that chart <laughs> Um, and it's not until you actually have a look at a lot of charts that you actually see some patterns. And there's a classic. I'm just going to draw some lines here and then you'll probably start to see it. Hopefully when they've drawn that last line, you might see something for the, the seasoned traders. Now, I'm just going to help you with that. I'm giving you a clue. So if we draw here, I'm going to give you a further clue. Then another one, then another one, then another one. And look and behold, we have a classic head and shoulders pattern here on Morrison's. Stands out like a sore thumb, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Um, that is a very nice setup to, to look at, uh, Hamish. Uh, so thanks for passing this one in. It's a, a really good one for. Uh, educational purposes here so what we've got here is a head and shoulders pattern so that's a classic um, bearish move in, in the market or potential bearish setup in the market and that is actually played out here you can see here we have left shoulder we've got the head right shoulder and then a break of support and uh, it's come down it's retraced and it's had a further move to the downside now we're just sort of um, chopping around a little bit although we have had a tick up uh, on volatility uh, to the downside um, is this something I would trade uh, not at the moment I'd be looking to see what it does through this level uh, or this level uh, at the moment um, but certainly um, that was a good chart to, to have a look at so I thought I so thanks Hamish for sending in those um, stock uh, symbols. We will apply this. That it'll be very interesting to apply some of this uh, these stocks to my latest um, indicator that I'm about to to send out over the weekend. I'm really excited about that. Uh, I won't give too much away, but it's um, been something I've been trading with um, fairly successfully over the probably the last two years, both on stocks and. Um, uh, currency, mainly on uh, currency, but I have sort of back tested it in, in stocks and I have taken uh, a few trades, um, I guess more for um, confirmation that when I have a look at what I've got set up here, I sort of back test the setup on the, the other indicator for stocks and it holds up uh, particularly well, um, which is good if you're uh, trading stocks as a, as a day trader. Um, so you're looking to hold much shorter positions than what we're looking at here. Remember, this is on the sort of daily chart, so you're looking at much more longer term. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's really exciting. So um, lastly, I'd like to just cover off a trade I took myself this week, um, which was um, at what I thought was a fairly good setup. Um, so obviously, healthcare sector in the U.S. Um, uh, is is probably one of the sectors that's getting a fair bit of investment at the moment. Certainly um, the company that finds the, the vaccine to to the, 
the coronavirus is going to be um, worth a lot of money, but that's only going to be good if you have a company that can mass produce it. So I reckon Pfizer is one of those um, players. Uh, certainly looks uh, favourable at the moment. So we did have a I did have a signal um, on my system to to get in there. Um, so I'll just talk you through that one. So I got in at uh, approximately um, 37, uh, sorry, 35.78 I got in at um, here, which is our entry line here. And my stop loss uh, is down here. I'll show you how I calculate that on stocks in a minute. Um, and I've got a target pretty much up here. Uh, I'm going to apply a, a trailing stop. Um, from here as well, which means once I hit that target, I'll move my stop loss um, up to a certain level um, so that I uh, don't lose on, on the trade after having a really good uh, setup. Um, I tend to have a, a little bit of movement um, for stocks to, to, to uh, move around, give them a little bit of uh, free space if you like. Um, so that was a setup that I took earlier in the week. So I am long on Pfizer. If I just have a look at my mechanics and my trading plan around that, um, it's no different from any stock. It's very similar to currency. So I've got a few things that I check against. It's like a point-based system. Is it stock trading up? In this case, I'm, I'm uh, only interested in the buy side. If it was CFDs, I could be going either way, long or short. But in this case, is it trading up? Yes, it is. Is it liquid? Yes, it is. It's a massive company, Pfizer. Have I read the company announcements? Yes, they had a, a positive uh, uh, first quarter earnings decision to buy. It was my Renko chart. Did it exceed my maximum trade limit? No, it didn't. Uh, comments um, was based on technical analysis and price action. So this is effectively my journal, guys. So any trade you take is uh, a good practice to actually have a, a, a journal. Um, when did I take the trade? I took it on the 20th of April. Um, uh, I've just put in some uh, amounts here, nominal amounts, obviously, but um, just for uh, education purposes, we'll put in these um, nominal figures. So if we trade $1,000 uh, US, I'll give it 10% uh, run. Um, how many shares uh, did I buy? 23, let's say. Um, buy share price is uh, 35.78, that's what I bought at. So I put all these figures in and everything gets calculated for me. So uh, the the buy price was that, that means that overall I've paid uh, this. Um, I don't actually pay for brokerage, I'm, uh, I'm using Stake, which is uh, an excellent platform. I think you guys, uh, certainly here in Australia, um, but for Hamish in the UK, I think uh, stake is in the UK or shortly coming where there's um, there's no brokerage uh, price. Um, a bit like Robin Hood in the US. Um, so this is my stop loss. So when my, uh, I guess, when the value of my investment goes down to $740.64, I'd be looking to get out. That is my hard stop. It will be this price, um, which I've actually marked on the, the chart, which is here, just to give you a visual representation to see how much room we give the stock. So that's that price there. And I also employ a trailing stop, 40% retracement. So once the stock gets to 39.35, uh, what I'll do is I'll apply a, a trailing stop. So if this stock hits this price here, which will be a nice move up. I'm currently up 5.2%, uh, which I'll show you in a second. Um, I'll imply a trailing stop from there, which means that this stop loss here will move much uh, further up. Um, so we, we've given it enough time to, to move, but we're, we're taking um, profit if it goes the other way. So it's uh, just a way to protect our uh, good decisions, let's say, and our um, uh, you know, our trading plan, we've made a good decision. We certainly don't want to have a losing trade. So that's um, a bit of protection. Um, again, a little bit different for how I trade Forex, but um, that's the strategy. I stick to it. Um, break even price, it tells me the break even price. It tells me my current price here as well. So I can put in the current share price. It'll show me um, my profit and loss. I'm up 42 US dollars um, since uh, placing that trade on the 20th, which was, 
Um, we'll go back. So that was just over a week ago. Yeah, just over a week ago. So almost two weeks, you could say. Uh, we're at five percent, which is look. That's a really <laughs> healthy number. I think most forex uh, traders would be very happy if they made five percent on their account uh, a month. As uh, certainly a lot of hedge funds, uh, that's what they aim for. A lot of super funds, they're aiming for that a year. Um, your bank account. Um, uh, I'm not sure uh, anyone has a bank account that's going to return that amount. Um, per year never mind in two weeks so um so yeah so that i just wanted to show you guys that so that you could have a little bit of a breakdown in terms of um, what we do here at kilted training in terms of our setup our discipline on taking trades uh, it's all about the percentage game guys and um, so thanks for listening until next time look after your families Stay safe and um, hopefully talk to you early in the week with some new trade setups. Thanks, guys.